Welcome to this new episode of the progress that we're making, building a copy of the thousand-year-old cluster ship that was dug up in the 19, early 1970s in such good condition that one could really see how it was built. i am just put together a few shots of different handwork that, that we've been working on, different processes. For example, here we're establishing the tr the uh, fair line of the outside of the board. So this pin, this uh, thin piece of wood here, has been is flexible, and we're just putting on, making it look fair. We will then draw a line and then cut off those bits with an axe, and then plane them 90 degrees to the board. Here, Axel is working on mounting a piece of the great strake, Megenhofer. He's just checking the angle there. This is a kind of um, plumb angle. He uses a little weight and it has the angles there written on it. What's that say? 45 degrees. Doesn't quite fit in the gap there, I see. Yeah, he's measuring the last board that was done before the great strake to because the next board will have a similar angle to the last board. This is just dressing, well actually getting just getting rid of some of the material. It was a bit too thick at that point. And there's quite a lot to go, so it's quicker to use the axe than the plane at that point. You have a bit more to take off. I think that probably the Vikings used the axe more than the plane. That, that when you get quite good at using the axe, you can get a very smooth surface with it. And in the things that I've seen in museums, I often notice that there are axe marks on things that maybe modern people would plane. Because the Viking planes are very hard to use, they're very hard work on your wrists. So the axe is much, uh, much more user friendly than the Viking plane. A lot of this oak that we're using has a very variable structure the growth patterns of them, the way that the fibres are arranged throughout the wood changes a great deal and that dictates a lot of the way that you have to use the axe, where you cut, which direction you cut in. So you'll see that there's a fair bit of change in the angle of attack onto the wood and that really, you feel it when you're working. If there's too much resistance in one direction, you know that the grain direction has changed and you have to change the angle of the, of the blow in order to take off the foot fibres easily. To introduce the next segment, I want to show you some footage of Saga Farman, which is the sister ship to our project. It's a copy of the same Kloster ship. Here she is sailing from Norway to Denmark. And... Uh, these are good uh, pictures because the next segment is about weaving the wool that makes the sail. And these shots show really well how big that sail is. Bearing in mind that Saga Farman is over five metres wide, it gives you an idea of just how big that sail is. Although I don't have footage of the actual weaving, the weaving is uh, very, very highly skilled work. We're very lucky to have such skilled workers who are volunteering in this project. And uh, the process of making the sail, the main sail, the big square sail in wool is incredibly difficult and time consuming. And uh, it's one of the reasons we're using modern, more modern looms. The Vikings used a different kind of loom, which was much more time consuming. But this is time consuming enough and uh, it's incredibly skilled work. The uh, wool here is from Spelsev, it's called, it's a kind of Stone Age breed of sheep. It has quite different wool to 
modern Jeep. And uh, it was donated by one of the companies that produced this wool. It, it's a twine, that one. It's just two threads, very, very tightly woven. And the quality of the end product is uh, uh, remarkable. It's, mo it's almost more like linen or jute or something. It's very, very heavy. Much You really wouldn't imagine it was wool if you didn't know. And the sale is... Uh, I can't remember the facts, the details about how big it is, but it's absolutely enormous. And it, each of these uh, small strips that we're making here, I mean, they're about 80 centimeters wide, I think. They're over 20 meters long. Um, so we're doing the long threads, which is called, I think, the ending in Norwegian. But I've got to be careful now not to say too many supposed facts, because I don't know enough about it to uh, not make mistakes. So let's just enjoy the footage. Even at this stage, a great deal of work has already been done because the product that was delivered to us was twine on the roll, which has been divided into exactly the right number of parts to make, the, to make this next stage that we're doing. I think, I don't know if it was 80 or, I don't know how many hundred threads it was. You could count them. There are four in each of those bits between each of those metal in this shop. So that was all divided up and put into these plats in order to make this next part of the process possible. Difficult for me to describe this work because I don't know enough about it. It would be better to have one of the one of the ladies in the shot here to to help describe this because they really do know a lot about it and I don't. So while we take out these tangles, just gently, because some of those threads are very weak. So while we're doing that, th that plaited part of it that's for that's the, the, that we're you know we're turning the, the plat into these into a beautifully straight and organized roll and that the plaited part has to be held under tension the whole process of doing this and it's 20 meters it takes about 10 or 12 hours to do this process so that's why there are so many people involved I mean we can tie it off and go for a break keep it under tension but uh, we didn't really, I don't think. We just uh, we just changed 
roles. Det som er inne er viktig, at du har det så kort som mulig, fordi at disse her, de snur seg, og du må passe på at du ikke blir flink på dem. Bare ta rundt det, og så knytte den rundt i midt imellom, så jeg får en bitte liten åpning.
ist der Jeg har egentlig veldig mye opptak fra dette Megan Huppe-bygging. Ja, det går en egen serie på det. Det går en egen serie på det, ja. Da må man alltid glemme noe. Ingen film av det med å legge inn kjære og strie. Nei, det var ikke det? Nei, ikke noen ting. Men det kommer nok etter hvert, ikke? Ja, ja, ja.
Det der er kjempefint. Stremmingen der er veldig tydelig. Ja, den er veldig klar. Og kjære å komme ut i bollen. Og så her under. Pottetett. In these we're going to put wooden pegs. Den vi har fått lånt. Ja. Ja. The difficulty with these pieces is that they are made with timber that's at a point where the tree divides like a branch, the branches out. And because of all the reaction wood that grows, um, it's kind of unstable as it dries. It makes the piece of wood move shrinks and in an uneven way because the grain is going all over the place. Here's a good example. This one. You can see how much that's changed. Now when that was first cut it fitted pretty much perfectly but because all of the, the timber in the middle there which is kind of bent as it's dried it's lifted up this side here. So we made these ones by first doing a kind of rough cut and then we've waited a few months so they'll be cut once again down to the boards like that one has been. No, um, this one here that's, that's actually got its holes in it. So they're, they're cut a second, a second time. But in a way, we've it's been we had to wait for the Megenhofer to come on, and that's taken a year to do the six boards that that make up the Megenhofer. So it's um, we've done w kind of a bit of a mistake in a way that we've done too much work on these. Um, Spunter, they're called. I suppose they're called like something like knees in English. Ribs. We should really have waited until we had the, the pins ready to put them so that we could do the work and then fix it down. So the fact that this one is left like this without the pins in means that it's going to carry on moving as it changes, as the humidity in the air changes. And there have been floods here, so it's been very, very humid. But I wanted to film this uh, this last bit of the Meg in Hufford. The, this is the one that I've been working on a lot, together with Steinard. So while I've been away, this last bit has been done, this last join here, they've been evened out.
it's looking good. Let's go around the ship, have a look on the other side. good that one but it's not bad either I it was a bit short that one really but it has been very very difficult to make these they're very complex they've taken a long long time to make this is the, the last one here right that one's still Still not quite there yet. So they have to be, it has to be tight on the inside, but also tight underneath. That one's looking really good actually. Tight all the way along, looks great that. Done a good job. These also, it's the same thing here, the same problem of as the wood dries, it, it changes shape quite a lot, which is one of the reasons why they've taken so long to make. That's the one that Axel made, it's nice. That one's on there. So that's the update. So really, in the best of worlds, we would have finished the Megan Hufford and then started on the ribs. But because there are a lot of us working, we have to all have work to do. We made, we've been making the ribs. Well, I mean, some of them were made almost a year ago now. There's one down there which I made. I'll, I'll fix that in. But I have been waiting for, um, like, I want the, I want to have the pegs, so that I can do the work and then put it in and have it all finished in one go. I think it's this one, number two. So you can, I have to kind of wait until this, this piece of the Megan Hoofler is finished so that we don't kind of get in each other's way when we're working. <laughs>